get the fuck up. Simon says, get the fuck up. Time to work on the next review. So the plot of the film takes place in the land of Oriana, a kingdom in another dimension under the rule of a great princess. But the kingdom is overtaken by the evil Duke of Zill and captures the princess in order to become the new ruler. Out of desperation, the princess sends a magic tear into a dimense porter to send help. The tear then enters what is assumed to be Earth and falls into the hands of Felix the Cat. Felix then follows the tear into the other dimension, followed behind by the professor and his nephew, who are determined to steal Felix's magic bag for... what else? Science, of course! As he encounters several characters, both friend and foe, Felix and his comrades must now rescue the princess, defeat the Duke of Zill, and save Ariana from the forces of evil. So, has the film held up since my childhood? If it's hard for you guys to notice, this film was a part of my childhood. As a kid, I rented this one from the video store quite often and had a blast watching it over and over again. And for a cruddy animated film based on the popular character, it was a lot of fun. The characters are all over the place, so let's start with Felix. He's pretty much as he is in the classic cartoons, but it's quite funny seeing him in a fish out of water scenario. His puns can be a little cringing, but it's tolerable. Unlike some pun-filled films, no sign of the snowman. Maybe he melted. No, he's just hibernating. And I really want to apologize. There's also the Princess Oriana, who while a bland character, is okay at best. She can be a bit of a drag at first, but you eventually see her shine through. Other characters, including the Professor and his nephew, along with Tim the Hunter and others, are welcomed in the film and help out on the adventure. But of course a hero can't come across any obstacles without the villain. Isn't that right, Joffrey? Sure. Unfortunately, this one has to go. That's for the Starks! And let me tell you, there's a ton of villains in this. There is, of course, Wack, who is pretty sly and a bit of a prick, but he's a likable guy. Hell, I'd probably work for him in his circus. What's also great are the amount of creature designs in the film. All look original and very outrageous. But of course, let's talk about the Duke of Zill, the big baddie of the film. While he is nothing special, he is a chilling villain. His robotic mask and armor feel like something out of Disney or Marvel. In fact, this guy looks like a cross between Mysterio from Spider-Man and Darth- Wait a minute! Let's rewind the plot for a second. A princess and her people are attacked by an evil force ruled by a mechanical overlord, is captured and put into slavery by a sluggish crime lord in a land ruled by alien-like creatures, sends a message as her only hope, lands in the hands of a young hero with an unusual power, followed by two smart beings, comes across an almost viewable bounty hunter, and has to save the princess from a dark lord. Gee, now where have I heard that before? It's freaking Star Wars! I mean, wow! There is like... 
like no difference. The whole plot is basically Star Wars. Why rip off Star Wars? Did you really think arguably the greatest sci-fi film of all time was so low on the radars that no one would connect the dots? Man, and everybody thought The Force Awakens was stealing too much. I mean, what would George Lucas say about this? Again, it's like poetry, so sort if of they rhyme. On second uh, thought, that's a bad idea. Well, to be fair, guys, this film did come out in the 80s during the wake of Star Wars. In fact, a lot of other films were cashing in on it, including Spaceballs, Transformers, and even the frickin' Muppet Babies. Release your animal Vader, or I'll zunk you with my lightsaber. I'll give you a this, and a that, and a this. I knew I should have taken lightsaber lessons instead of tennis lessons. But back to the movie. I also got a comment on the score of the film, which is probably one of the best things about it. It's got all the cheese of the 80s, but still manages to pull out some catchy themes, like the music in the headhunter scene. It's so cool I unfortunately can't seem to find it, even in rough form. Can you imagine going into battle with this kick-ass music? Why are we fighting again? Because the music is supposed to make a good action sequence, so let's fry these fuckers! Got it. There's also the princess theme, which is quite relaxing and calm. Probably one of the best songs in the movie is the Duke of Zill anthem. It's one of the most unappreciated animated villain songs of all time. I mean, it's so 80s and rocked out, yet I love it! God, you can put anything to it and it would match. Walk out to this shit all day. What the hell are you doing? What does it look like I'm doing? I'm listening to a kick-ass villain song. You're supposed to be doing your review. Oh come on, this song rocks. <laughs> Shut up and finish your damn review. Oh! I clean up your own damn blood. I'm a goddess, bitch. Uh, okay. So some good elements. Are there any bad elements? To be honest, while I loved it as a kid, the film is a little confusing from an adult perspective and doesn't make much sense. Also, the animation is not that good, but I've seen far, far worse. The diamonds, my god! Don't ever cut to that again! I lost so many brain cells because of that shit! Anyway. I can see why a lot of critics nowadays can really bash it. While it's not a great movie by any means, and can be for some quite horrendous, this movie is much like Space Jam, as it holds a spot in my childhood in imagining going on a magical adventure to other dimensions. Overall, Felix the Cat is very much a guilty pleasure for me. I found the story, ideas, and worlds interesting and weird, the characters are bland but you want to see them pull through, and it's got some pretty kick-ass music. If you're curious to see it, I'd say give it a watch. Sober or not, you might have some fun with it, with all the weird madness it holds. I'd give it a 7 out of 10. It's cheesy, but passable. Well, there you have it, guys. Felix the Cat the Movie, a cheesy animated film of its time, but overall a fun little film from my childhood. Agree? Disagree? Let me know in the comments Jack, below. Jack, let's relax together. Hey, well, that was a little bit
Hey guys, what's up? It's Big Jack Films here. You're probably thinking, what the hell is this video at the end of the review? Well, since my reviews are getting positive ratings and kind of a cult following, I thought I'd give a little back by doing some charity shoutouts. Because hey, if the nostalgia critic could give to a good cause, why can't I? So today's charity shoutout is a real special one. As you guys know, I am a huge fan of King Kong, and therefore am a huge advocate of gorillas and apes in the wild. Which is why today I'm sending my charity shout out to the Diane Fossey Gorilla Fund International. Now for those of you who don't know, Diane Fossey was a huge advocate for gorillas in the wild. Hell, they made a movie about her starring Sigourney Weaver called Gorillas in the Mist with Rick Baker doing the ape suits. She did whatever she could to fight these poachers and keeping these great animals from going extinct, even to the point where it cost her her life when she was murdered by the poachers she was trying to stop. But her legacy lives on in this amazing program, and you guys can help out saving the gorillas by donating to their site. This is an amazing group that's still keeping the gorillas alive in the wild today. And with your help, we can get these creatures out of the endangered list. So do yourself a favor and check out this amazing charity drive and definitely help out. It would definitely make King Kong very proud. So donate today, and until the next video, this is Big Jack Films, signing off.